All right, mate. Let's uh, let's look at DNT here, District X. Uh, it, yeah, I, I like it. Like all of these ones that have been breaking up through this have pushed higher, at least into uh, the 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 purple 200. Now, as you can see here, it's just sitting on this resistance point. It's been hammering on it. Uh, this was the breakdown point. It was support back here, resistance here, resistance here. Uh, we're coming back into that, hammered into it here, again here, 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 and here. Now, obviously, the more times that you hammer into resistance, the the more likely it is to break. Um, RSI is looking good here. I like the strength in the RSI. Uh, you can see back here, for example. Well, let's let's just put that there. And if you look back here, when when this first broke up. Like you can see that it was then the RSA was then bullish, right? The RSA held firm. Um, even even these dips here were buys because the, the RSA held, and you can see the strength in the RSA. Even these dips, people were getting worried and everything else, but the dip was a buying opportunity. But the, the RSA was holding strong. You would expect the same thing here if if there was a dip. Now there doesn't have to be a dip. I'm just saying. That the RSA, this first run up can can often be held as support when we dip back down a little bit like this happened. So the more times this hammers on resistance, the more likely it is to break to the upside. And uh, we we've definitely hammered on that. On on top of that, you know, you have to think that the the, the volume here is accumulation for a push higher. So. Overall, there's good signs. On top of that, we have the funding. The funding is trying its hardest. Uh, God, the funding has been positive this whole time. Bloody hell. Um, so, you know, if funding pops here as well, this this might attempt to start barting, barting back to the upside. Um, when you start breaking out above uh, weekly, all weekly moving averages, it can be a very bullish thing. For example, if you remember Rain, now Rain, uh, the, Rain created a very similar-ish pattern where, well, there was no base here, but we, we we had that big move up, and that big move up was quite a quite a decent percentage. You know, you're talking 115 percent. This was a lot more. Dent was um, 700 percent, but it just reminded me of the of the pattern where it broke up, consolidated, dropped back down, and when you got back above the all moving averages again, it, it managed to run to new all-time highs. Like, it, it, it took out these previous highs once you got up there. There was pullbacks in here, but you can see that the weekly moving averages held price, and, and from there we were able to continue up until we had that coronavirus crash. But, like, if you look at the overall structure of these, like, this is sitting down here at 19 cent. Rain was very similar down here at six cent. You know, it was so early in the days that it, it actually, I mean, this base ended up just being a base and a breakout of the base ended up being, um, well, it, it ended up being a huge bull market. If this is holding strong here <clears throat> and maybe work on a work its way back up here, it's potentially creating the same longer term base, you know, here. And even if it does crash back down, you know, what Rand did was, was something like that, for example. So overall, you know, you have to kind of like the structure of District X um, sitting down here at uh, 19 cent, you know, um, as a longer term trade, you know, I, I have to like it. And as long as price is staying above weekly moving averages here, it looks very good to me. Um, what you can do is you can trade the new weekly. Uh, it's into resistance here. Are we going to get some some uh, choppy action into Saturday and Sunday? Um, it is possible. You, you know what the weekends are like. And the thing is, a new two-week candle can be very important. Like if we flip green on a new two-week candle, a lot of times it likes to stay green. If this market's going to stay very hot, it wouldn't surprise me to see the next two-week candle uh, completely pump back up. So, you know, as a longer-term investor, like – you can see right there, this was a consolidation pattern and a breakup. We don't have the consolidation yet. Um, but what I'm saying is when these markets are strong, sometimes they just like to run. And you can see each two-week candle, each of these two-week candles, when it flip green, they like to stay green. So if you're a buyer and holder, um, you know I would say the safest way is to trade the new two-week candle. It's already up 12% today, so I can't tell you to buy this today. Um, 
worst case or best case scenario, I would have to say would trade a new daily candle. I don't like telling anybody to buy when it's up 12%. So, you know, longer term, I like it. Um, yeah, I, I would I would trade the new candle. If it's red, then, you know, just, just wait and wait for that dip. Um, again, if it does dip and we have a red dip back, uh, like like we did here, okay. So so if we're going to create a uh, a consolidation range next week, well, you want to be buying the low end of this. See see that this this candle right here. You want to be buying into the low end of that candle, having patience, let it pop back up, and then see if you can get the continuation. 